The story of sugar is as rich and complex as the sweet crystals themselves, spanning centuries and continents. From its early cultivation to its role in global trade, sugar has shaped economies, cultures, and diets across the world. Sugar has been an integral part of human diets for centuries, playing a role in culinary traditions, rituals, and trade. It was first introduced to the Western world by the Arabs, who not only brought the sugarcane plant itself, but also the knowledge and techniques required for its cultivation. This occurred during the 8th and 9th centuries, when they introduced these practices to regions such as Sicily and Spain. However, sugar remained a luxury item, considered an exotic spice for many centuries. Its production was labor-intensive, and the processes involved were both time-consuming and costly, making it an item accessible only to the wealthy elite. It wasn't until the transformative era of the Industrial Revolution that the production of sugar was industrialized, paving the way for mass production. This pivotal moment in history drastically reduced the cost of sugar, turning it from a rare delicacy into a household staple. Today, the sugar industry is a global powerhouse worth an estimated $67 billion, providing sweetness to countless products consumed worldwide. The journey of sugar from a luxury item to a ubiquitous element in our daily lives is a testament to human ingenuity and the ever-evolving nature of industry. In the United States, sugar production relies on two primary agricultural sources, sugarcane and sugar beets. These two crops collectively meet the nation's demand for sugar, although their contributions differ slightly. It is estimated that 55 to 60% of the sugar produced in the US comes from sugar beets, while the remainder is derived from sugarcane. Each of these crops requires specific climatic conditions to grow, which underscores the diversity of the environments where sugar production takes place. Sugarcane thrives in tropical and subtropical regions, where warm temperatures and consistent rainfall create ideal growing conditions. In contrast, sugar beets are cultivated in temperate climates, where the cooler seasons provide the stability needed for their growth. The process of cultivating these crops begins with the careful selection of land, as the quality of the soil and access to resources like water are critical factors for success. Fertile soil with good drainage is essential, as it ensures the plants receive adequate nutrients while preventing water logging. The propagation methods for sugarcane and sugar beets differ significantly, reflecting the unique nature of each crop. Sugarcane is propagated using stem cuttings known as sets. These are sections of the sugarcane plant that contain nodes capable of sprouting roots and shoots. On the other hand, sugar beets are grown from seeds, which are sown directly into the soil. Once planted, these crops require months to mature. Sugarcane, in particular, takes between 12 to 16 months to reach full maturity, depending on the variety and growing conditions. When the crops are finally ready for harvest, the process begins with specialized machinery designed to maximize efficiency. In the United States, sugarcane harvesting is a highly mechanized process, minimizing manual labor while increasing productivity. Once harvested, the journey of sugarcane continues as it is transported to a mill for processing. Here, the freshly cut stalks are loaded onto conveyor belts that feed them into transport bins. These bins travel alongside the harvesting machines, ensuring that the sugarcane is quickly and efficiently collected. From the fields, the sugarcane is loaded onto trucks and delivered to a nearby mill. Upon arrival, the cane is deposited onto a receiving table, often along with soil, rocks, and plant debris that were inadvertently collected during the harvesting process. To prepare the cane for processing, it must first be thoroughly cleaned. This involves feeding the cane onto belt conveyors equipped with powerful jets of water and rotating comb drums. These mechanisms work in tandem to remove dirt, leaves and other unwanted materials, leaving the cane as clean as possible. The cleaned sugar cane is then crushed to break down its tough fibrous structure. Inside a crusher, rotating hammers smash the cane into smaller pieces, preparing it for the next stage. The crushed cane is passed through a series of mills, known as a milling tandem, where it undergoes intense compression. Large rotating cylinders press the cane fibers, extracting as much juice as possible. The extracted juice flows into a separate channel, while the leftover fibrous material, known as bagasse, is collected. Bagasse is far from being a waste product. It is often used as a renewable source of energy, burned as fuel to power the mills themselves. The juice extracted from the cane is collected in large vats and undergoes a series of quality control tests in the mill's laboratory. 
These tests are essential for ensuring that the juice meets the required standards. By analyzing the sugar concentration and other parameters, the mill can optimize the extraction process, guarantee consistency, and comply with industry regulations. Additionally, these tests contribute to scientific research and development, helping the industry innovate and improve efficiency. The juice is then subjected to a process known as sulfitation, which involves passing it through a 10-meter high tower filled with sulfur dioxide vapors. This step preserves the juice by preventing microbial growth and balancing its natural acidity. Following this, the juice is mixed with a lime solution in a process called alkalization. This step further clarifies the juice by regulating its pH and removing impurities. During the reaction with lime, the juice undergoes a visible transformation, changing from a dark brown color to a lighter yellow. Next, the clarified juice is transferred to large settling tanks, where it is allowed to rest for approximately two hours. During this time, any remaining impurities settle at the bottom of the tank. The residue, often referred to as mud, is not discarded. Instead, it is filtered to extract any residual sugar, and the remaining material is used as fertilizer for sugarcane fields, completing a cycle of reuse and sustainability. The purified juice moves on to the evaporation stage, where it is boiled in a series of evaporators. This process removes about two-thirds of the water content, increasing the sugar concentration from 15% to 60%. The resulting syrup is then further clarified in tanks where floating impurities are skimmed off. The next phase, crystallization, is perhaps the most critical in sugar production. The syrup is heated in a vacuum pan until it becomes saturated with sugar. To initiate the crystallization process, sucrose crystals suspended in alcohol are introduced into the syrup. These seed crystals serve as nuclei, encouraging the formation of new sugar crystals. As the crystals grow, the mixture, now called massaquite, is discharged into crystallizers. Here, it is slowly stirred and cooled, allowing the crystals to reach their desired size. The massaquite is then transferred to high-speed centrifugal machines, which separate the sugar crystals from the uncrystallized syrup, or molasses. The centrifuge spins at an impressive 1,200 RPM, ensuring that the sugar crystals remain in the basket while the molasses is removed. The crystals are washed with fine jets of water to remove any residual syrup, resulting in raw sugar of exceptional purity. Finally, the raw sugar is dried in a granulator, where heated air reduces its moisture content to the industry standard of 0.02%. The dry sugar is stored in large bags, each capable of holding 1,000 kilograms. These bags are transported to packaging facilities, where automated machines divide the sugar into smaller retail-sized packages. Throughout the entire process, strict hygiene and quality control measures are maintained to ensure the final product meets the highest standards. From field to table, the journey of sugar is a testament to the ingenuity and precision of modern agriculture and manufacturing.